Me and a couple of my friends, we had been told about a local waterfall spot, said it was going to be a fun time just to jump off the cliff and see a, a beautiful waterfall. We like, saw the gate and it said no trespassing. We had to jump over two separate fences which both had uh, no trespassing signs on them. On November 3rd, 2018, 10 utes were swept into Waiaka River near Anna's Pond due to a flash flood that occurred without warning. Seven of the 10 utes got swept downstream and fortunately were able to cling to the rocky banks to prevent themselves from being swept even further down river. The remaining three utes got trapped behind a swollen 120 foot waterfall with just a tiny ledge to stand on while clinging as best they could to the slippery cliff walls. You know, Annas, Annas is right on the border between seven and two, the, the rescue districts. Dispatch was still unsure, you know, what, what lies ahead. Um, if there even was viable victims, you know, we're not sure yet. Information was very limited as far as how many people were actually missing and what their conditions were. Driving up Kauai High Road, we just saw the rivers coming down. We're like, holy smokes, this is, this is the real deal right here. The rain started pounding. River's raging. When we uh, initially got on scene, the river conditions was kind of um, extraordinary. And the uh, caretaker, Hana, was there. And he was a crucial resource for us, you know. First of all, he told us that he's never seen the river this swollen and the conditions this bad before. It, I couldn't imagine getting any worse than what it was. Uh, I've never seen anything so strong in my life. It definitely wasn't getting any better. We didn't have time to wait it out. It was, it was a matter of taking action in order to hopefully save these people. Um, Captain Fong informed me that this, we're probably not going to be able to fly due to the weather, and it's going to turn into a uh, rope evolution. The three youths trapped behind the waterfalls required much more technical and sophisticated rope work in order for them to be extricated. Um, as I was speaking to the chopper pilot, he told me he only has about an hour and a half of daylight to fly. The risk now goes up. And they were hanging on, they are yelling, they are using so much energy, and I could only imagine what the victims were going through at that time. Once we figured out their general area, we could hear them screaming. Their, their voices were echoing across the, the canyon, bouncing off the other wall, and we could kind of hear echoes of voices yelling for help. And all I could see was fingertips and the tops of their heads. Waterfall is coming right there, just creating its own weather. It's windy, um, loud. In rescue, especially rope, you know, having communication is critical. Initially, when we got there, we were still having problems with setting up our comms. And we were having a discussion about, you know, whether to proceed or not because we didn't have our comms up. That's when I saw Dave pass me, and he had a rope bag in, in, his, in his hand, and, and, and we're trying to tell him, Dave, hold on, and, and Dave's like, no, I'm going. Like, I'm going to go down and, and help these people. If I don't, they're going to die, and you guys come get me. And that was the last time I saw Dave until five hours later. Mahan is like, I got to get down there. I, I got to get there. Like, I know, Dave. We, we, I want to get down there, too. Dave wanted to go over, even though we didn't have the comms, because he was worried about the safety of the, the people that were hanging on, on the edge. I think he showed his bravery that day when he took it upon himself to go over the edge, even though the comms wasn't completely set up yet, to try and secure these people, at least in the meantime, while we got completely set up. After the three youths and all rescue personnel were safely at the top of the cliff, Chopper One flew in the dark and extricated everyone down to Anna's ranch. On November 3rd, 2018, those men, especially Dave Mann, exemplified the true meaning of the word courageous. They were courageous. I am so blown away by, by the first responders and the rescue team and and everyone who is involved in keeping us safe. My friends probably would have died if you guys didn't come, so we're so thankful for you and, and all the equipment that you used to help us. And I was out of 
out of strength when, when you guys came and rescued me, so I was in really need of your equipments. Those guys were amazing. They were really like, they confronted me, they, they rescued me, they gave me peace. They, they even feed me when I, when I got in the ambulance. And it was incredible, it was such a, such an act of love and compassion. I don't know what I would have done without you guys and for you to risk your lives, that was, thank you so much for doing that. Without you, I can firmly say that, that I wouldn't have all my friends here with me today. And for that, I am extremely grateful for everything that you've done, for, for putting your life on the line, your own life on the line, and sacrificing yourself so that others could live. So that um, without you guys, um, there would be at least three dead people. So thank you so much for, for rescuing us and really appreciate you guys. And we are forever thankful for everything that you have done for us. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much.